Hello and welcome everyone to the churchtechcast.com question and answer show for Friday, October 18th, 2013. I have a few of your questions ready and if you would like to uh, send me some more questions, you can do so paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com or 1-877-763-3246. And I should be able to help you. Also, if you'd like to drop me a line on Twitter, I'm Paul Allen Cliff, P A U L A L A N C L I F, or go into the chat room. This show records live every Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, or 3 p.m. Universal Time, UTC. Either way, if you join me on churchtechcast.com, you can pop into the chat room and say hi and ask me a question. Well, so for today, I don't have a ton of questions. I have three, and we'll just see where they, those lead us, shall we? So, first off, um, Jesse Gruber from the Church Tech Group on Google Plus said, Hey guys, I need some help. In... I'm trying to start a new podcast with existing, then continuing sermon audio, but I've never done it before. Is iTunes the best way to do this? What do you use? Thanks in advance. Well, I wrote back Jesse, and I gave him a step-by-step, -step, including telling him he could uh, get a copy of my first book, Podcasting Church, for free, uh, which you can do as well if you go to http colon slash slash bit dot ly slash podcast church free all lowercase if you uh, go there you can sign up for my free newsletter and get a copy of podcasting church which is $3.99 on Amazon so free there that's a good way to get started but let me address a misconception that Jesse has here iTunes really does nothing for podcasting except advertising. It's like free advertising. It's a list of all the podcasts that exist uh, that have submitted their feed to iTunes. You don't store your media there. You don't uh, pay iTunes for anything. They don't pay you for anything. They just have a list of podcasts and you can get on that list fairly easily. But that's where it ends. So uh, a lot of people seem to think that they upload their media to iTunes. No, you don't. iTunes doesn't have the media stored there whatsoever. So I've said this before, I'll say it again. The first thing you need to do is you need to find a media host. Uh, Libsyn and Blueberry are my two favorites, and they've been in the podcasting game for years and years. They were founded by podcasters for podcasters. You pay by the amount that you upload to their service per month, and they've got some great features. Um, I discovered one very recently, and that feature is... Uh, what they call the quick cast feature. You can upload the file uh, by FTP into a special folder and it reads off the information from the ID3 tags and you're done. And that's great. It just makes it easy. So that's just one example of all the cool features that Libsyn and Blueberry both have because they're created by podcasters for podcasters. Now, there are uh, some sharks out there, so take them with a grain of salt. Uh, there was one that I was using that said nowhere that what it had was a 30-day trial until day 30 arrived, and then all of a sudden, hey, your 30-day trial is over. What? What? I didn't know I was in a 30-day trial. I thought it was very nice that you were hosting my media for free, but I was actually a little concerned that you didn't have a business model. You apparently do have a business model, and that's cool. I just wish that you'd have told me that uh, what I thought was a free service was, in fact, a freemium service. So, step number one, make sure that you have a good media host. Step number two, 
make sure that you've got a good way to get um, an RSS feed. Without the RSS feed, it is not a podcast. I don't care what anyone else tells you, they're wrong. If they say, oh, you can have a podcast without an RSS feed, that's like saying you can have a radio channel without a transmitter. You can't. By definition, in order for it to be a radio station, it has to have a transmitter. Now, there are other ways to propagate the information, but it's not radio. It's internet radio. It's something else, but it's not radio radio. It could be satellite radio, but it's not radio. You see the difference? Okay. So, it would kind of be like saying you've got a television station without a picture. It just doesn't make sense. So, step two, figure out a way to get your RSS feed. The way that I do it and the way that most podcasters do it is they have their website hosted uh, on a server using RSS uh, using WordPress, which um, is a free content management system designed for blogging, but it can do other things. And there's a plugin that you can download called PowerPress. You download the plugin, you put it into your WordPress installation, and it gives you a player, but it also generates your RSS feed. Then you take that RSS feed, and that's what you send into iTunes. You can also send it to Stitcher. Uh, the Zune Marketplace, which they might have recently rebranded to the Xbox Marketplace since they quit making Zunes a long time ago. Um, you know, things like that. So those those are basically your three things that you need to do. Beyond that, it's publicity and just putting out new episodes on a regular basis. So it's not all that difficult. Uh, the the 20% that you do will give you 80% of the effort back. So that's the 20%. Now the remaining 80% is things like getting a good show opening and uh, getting a good format and things like that. And we talk about that all in the book, Podcasting Church. So next, D. Warthen from, again, the Church Tech Group on Google Plus asks, I'm looking for suggestions for an MP3 player plugin for a WordPress site. This will be used for the player and downloading of sermons. It should be fairly easy for the church staff to use. I know there are quite a few out there, but would like suggestions from someone who has used one that works out of the box and is easy for non-techie people. Now the big thing there is non-techie people. There was quite a discussion where someone said, oh yeah, you just install this uh, JavaScript library. Uh, no. No. She said non-techie people. So since she said non-techie people, what we want to do is we want to make it as easy as possible. Again, PowerPress is an easy solution. It also generates an RSS feed, which is a bonus. All of a sudden, the sermon audio becomes a podcast, which you can publicize easily. And people can subscribe to and get automatically, which, again, is what makes it a podcast. So... That's what I would do. Basically, all you need to do to put in new sermon audio is you copy the link from where it is on your media host and you paste it into a box right underneath your um, your blog post about the audio. Simple. For non-techie people, this is simple. So that's what I would recommend. There are other players out there. You can go through a bunch of them. But once you set up PowerPress, you're done. And you can show them in like two seconds. Okay, you copy this link and you paste it here and you hit verify and you're done. So that's what I would recommend for the non-techie people. Uh, finally, Jenny Shell, who is my wife's cousin and the editor of my books, um, has asked this question. I'm the admin for our new store Facebook page. She works in retail um, until she gets her editing career off the ground. Pulling for you, Jenny. 
And my boss mentioned that in the meeting all about all the stores having their own pages. The tech guy said something about being able to schedule posts. I can't figure out how to do it. Do you know how? Yes. Unfortunately, this is not something that Facebook itself does, but you can use a tool to do it. Now, from the standpoint of everyone who looks at Facebook, you could have a post that shows up every morning at 9 a.m., and you could be sleeping every morning at 9 a.m., and it still shows up. That's not something that Facebook itself does. It's something you do with the third-party tool. I use um, Social Ba myself, which is a plug-in for Chrome, and what it does is it posts to regular Google+, which is why I use it. Facebook. Facebook Pages, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the last of those, very common. But posting to Google+, that's the hard and unusual thing. So that's why I use Social Bob, but you're not using Google+. You are using Facebook. So I think what I would do is I'd either use BufferApp.com or I would use Hootsuite. Hootsuite is actually really easy to use, and I would use it if it supported Google+. In fact, that's what I used to use, because technically it does support Google+, but it supports Google+, pages, and I have a personal profile on Google+, and it doesn't support those. So that is what I would recommend, is uh, just these three possibilities. Uh, you've got Social Bob, Buffer App, or Hootsuite. Hootsuite is probably what you want in your particular situation. So how about you guys? Do you have any questions or comments that you'd like to leave? You can go ahead and leave them below in the comments section or Again, you can drop me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com, voicemail one eight seven 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 six three three two four six, or drop me a line on uh, Twitter at Paul Allen Cliff, P A U L A L A N C L I F. Remember, A L A N is my middle name, and there's only one F in Cliff. I've tried to keep it short that way, so um, you can do it there. I guess if you want to, you can go to Google+. I'm not there as much as I'd like, but uh, that is gplus.to slash Paul Clifford, and that'll take you right there to my page where you can circle me. Uh, also, if you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, that would be wonderful. If you're watching this on YouTube, nice and simple, just go up where it says subscribe and click subscribe. Actually, what I'll do is I will make the church tech cast box over my shoulder a subscribe link so click that to subscribe sneaky um or you can um go to bit.ly slash paul tube all lowercase and you can subscribe there that will take you directly to it so Next week on uh, the churchtechcast.com network, we're going to be talking about live tweeting tips on uh, Tech Help for Churches. On Tuesday, Creating Church, we're going to be talking about packages. Get your mind out of the gutter. Um, on Wednesday, we're going to be talking about time is life, which sounds much deeper than it is. And Thursday, we're going to be talking about video for your service. And again on Friday, questions and answers. So I hope that this has helped you, and I want you to go out and change eternity. Until next time, I'm Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.